I'm like, how about I make sure I don't block off my whole entire face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, same. Oh, crap. How are you? Oh, it's my channel. <laughs> I'm more like bland, like white bread, but anyway, mayo's good on bread, right? <laughs> anyway. I'll be the mayo. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> so, I said in my uh, first video, my like glossy eye makeup tutorial screens like right here. This is where you can find it. Yes. Um. So, <laughs> not me. I want to do. I'll probably do a get ready with me video with like someone, not anyone famous, but probably potentially famous. In fact, I think we're all stars in general. I want to introduce you guys to the lovely, the fabulous Miss Courtney Renee Taylor. Hello. I'm so excited to be on your channel. <laughs> I've been watching. So proud. Oh, thank you. I would like for Courtney to introduce yourself to the audience and like give some details about yourself that maybe some people don't know. Okay. Um, my name is Courtney Taylor. I am a aspiring famous country singer, <laughs> but I'm study studying musical theater with Eddie. And um, we have a busy life. I have a tiny weenie dog that I take care of. And she's iconic, by the way. She That's really my queen. Is. That's she, my queen. We should have brought her. We, we, we should. Oh my God, please. Yeah. We'll, we'll insert picture. Yeah. Here. We'll insert picture. <laughs> this is my last year of college, so I'm about to hit the real world and make my dreams come true. So. <laughs> and honestly, I really do think your dreams are going to come true. Like fully prepared. I think personally, like I've told her this constantly every day. You're a major inspiration to me. Truly, you, you are. You are to me too. And that means a lot to me to hear that from you. Let's get into it, shall we? I got headbands. Oh, you have one too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I didn't know if you had one. So no. I was like, I'll just bring my good old dandy, dandy fuzzy bear. <laughs> fuzzy bear. I've never called it that ever. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say too, I have a COVID free apartment. Yes. Literally COVID free. Everything is sanitized. I cleaned my bathroom. I cleaned uh, my makeup station. Like I literally cleaned everything. If you see like my room, it's like organized. Court is like shook. Back to uh, the cosmetical. Did Wait. you think about what your inspiration is for today? Yeah, I actually got my uh, board you here. Yours out. Yeah, I did my electronically. I'll put like my digital one here somewhere. But like this is like my makeup like board ish board ish oh. inspiration. And like I was just really inspired by just graphic makeup in general you know just like this eloquently beautiful style that's so dramatic yet again so soft what is yours like we, we planned ahead though. be prepared yeah and i think i'll put the picture like somewhere in the screen here and like to show her board because i'm very curious as to what she's created so this is not what it what it's going to look like Per se. per se, I can't hear the load for some reason, that's the problem. <laughs> but um, I have an obsession with butterflies and like the fact that all butterflies are different colors and they're kind of rare, you know, like nowadays. They're kind of, they were going extinct for a while and I love butterflies. But... And so <laughs> I was inspired by every different color butterfly look. I don't know. Let's see, this is the, ooh. These are the colors that I'm going for today. Yeah, and when she send me those, I'm gonna like leave a screen here. Yes, I will send them to you, you can see them more. Yeah, so that but. way it's like a, a visual representation. <laughs> so it won't be actually a butterfly on my eye and it won't be that same look, but I'm going for lots of color today. Oh, same. <laughs> 2021, it really has gone to a somewhat crazy start already. Uh, we thought 2021 was bad. Nah, her sis came to the party, <laughs> honey. She came to the she party. Really That's probably why my brain won't shut off at night. There's so much happening. Oh, most definitely. And you know, I hate getting political. I hate it mm -hmm. so much, but you can't help but get political because it's all over the news. Yeah. It's everywhere, even on like regular daytime talk well, shows. And also like any other time or like an election, you just trust that whoever made it are people we can trust. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you trust that. And that has not been the case this year. So I think more people, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> more people than ever are paying attention. And I think it's important. <clears throat> oh my gosh, there's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say personally, this election I have stayed up with as best as I can, you know, 
just because I am afraid for our future if we don't have the right leader and I'm very hopeful. Have you heard of what happened at the Capitol? Yes. Oh God, that, oh. <sighs> Do you have any opinions on that? I have lots of opinions on that. You know, let's just, let's just say, Eddie and I decided we were gonna go attack the Capitol. We would not do that. Exactly. <laughs> we would be afraid of dying. That is insane. And I have read, like, this has not happened since mm -hmm. 1812. Like, mm -mm. what is up with people? I mean, I think it's because, you know, they just, like, go crazy because he's lost. And, like, they just think it was an unfair election when it was clearly proven yeah, <laughs> by like, many politicians, both left and right. <laughs> that it was a fair election, but ugh. To me, it's like, first of all, they did do what everyone wanted them to do, which was hold it accountable, the election. And they had judge after judge after judge. It was already a fair election, but it is now being proved. It was proved and they still don't believe it. And it's even, that's coming from even Republicans. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's also, not just Democrats that have said, like, this is a fair election. Like, they have had Republican judges, people who support Trump, and, and that's the thing is, judges can't lie. They'll lose their license. Anyway, off to the subject of politics, because, again, I'm tired of it. We're hopeful. Uh, we're, speaking of uh, some crazy shit, have we heard about, speaking of Jeffrey, because, <laughs> by the way, did I mention where Jeffrey Star approved? Can we talk about that whole situation with... <laughs> The Please. whole entire like Kanye West, Jeffree Star cheating al allegation. I'm very curious on your thoughts because it was blowing up everywhere on the well, internet. Well, let's just say Jeffree milked that. Oof. Milked it. But I thought it was hilarious. I would do. You wake <laughs> up and you're, you find out like there's a rumor going around about you and you split up Kim and Kanye's marriage. And I'd be like, because there were so many pictures of like memes people created and he just thought it was hilarious and that's what you have to do when rumors come out about you and i know it's rumor because he made a video last night if you didn't see it i don't think i have but... it was like pretty it was like 10 o'clock i think oh yeah 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 the recent video he made yeah yeah i'll leave a link no i'm just fine <laughs> like it's not affecting him in any way He's just living life, man. Living like Larry. <laughs> Love it. Living like Larry. I'm sorry, living I like had... Larry. The person who started it, I don't think knew they were gonna get as much hype as they did, but <laughs> I mean, personally, I will say it was hilarious. They got the views though. Like I said, 2021 just hit us right in the, right in the balls. I mean, mm -hmm. it did, well, Lady balls. Lady balls. <laughs> Lady balls, non-binary balls. They hit us in the balls in general. Who gives a shit? Anyway. Um, <laughs> wait, is that a popcorn cut? No, 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 no. Oh, no. I was about to say. Like, I mean. My poor brown color bro. I love this little thing that you have. Oh, thank you. I got another one if you want to use it. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Are you sure? I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just think it's interesting. I've never used one before. By the way, what she's mentioning is this. <laughs> I started using it because I thought, um, you know, if I ever become like a professional, which I highly doubt. <laughs> I don't um, know. I don't. You will be a professional. <laughs> I just haven't done makeup on people. I've done a lot on me, but never on people, you know? But like, if I ever become like a professional, like I would like need my own palettes. I need to like have my own stuff to like in case someone doesn't have their own makeup, you know? Like I just have to be prepared. And like especially mixed pigments and stuff like that. So that's why I have this palette. Plus also because of the beer flu. Yeah, the beer flu. I'm gonna call it that. Uh you know, you have to be sanitary or at least, you know, semi sanitary. So it's you just have to be careful. True. And especially now it's like there was a time when we used to just touch everything everyone touched. And we were all like this close to each other all the time. And I feel like it will never go back <clears throat> to that. Oh, same. Like people are always gonna be cautious and afraid of germs. Oh yeah, I mean, I think with this pandemic, I think it taught us to be more, um, I guess more hygienic, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I consider that a positive. In a college, I think some 
young adults weren't really taught the basics of hygiene and so they get out of their parents' homes and they come to live on their own and they're not sure how to clean their bodies or put deodorant on or Ugh. wash their hands. Oh my God. Well, I got a question actually since we're speaking of hygiene. Who do you think is worse with hygiene, men or women? You wanna know? I actually think it's women. Okay, please elaborate. <laughs> so, yes, I will say I've come in, like I have come in contact with a lot of men that have the BO and who don't know th that they stink. And that has happened a lot. But I have met probably more, and this is just from my ratio of people that I've met and known in my life. But it's just something about women who just think that they're never dirty. I don't know. Hmm. Like some of them, not all of them. I am yeah. a woman. I know when I stink, <laughs> when I should shower, but I don't know. I mean, I guess I say women, but it's because I am a woman, so, and I just pay attention, I guess, more to women. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why I don't know. Well, I mean, it's kind of a factual and scientific proof that, um, well, I shouldn't say scientific, I'm not a scientist, but I think kind of consider this factual because I lived with women all my life. I think it's because women are so sensitive to odors, I think, or producing odors. Mm -hmm. I, I think, personally, if someone's a scientist out there, please leave a comment down below if I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, like, what kind of ethnicity I am, yes, I'm Latin American, so. Yes. So, in case people don't know, because, you know, people be like, what's your ethnicity? Are you, like, Filipino? I'm like, I mean, I don't, <laughs> look, listen. I can see where people think that, you know, have thought that before. Well, I can see why, because my eyes are sort of almond shaped, sort of, um, <laughs> sort of, not all the way. But I mean, I can see why though. I'll, I'm just gonna bring this topic up anyway, because uh, I am a, what you call a homosexual. Uh, yes. That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm gay. And uh, I would say this in gay men that, Gay men are the most vain people than women. I feel like in reality, gay men are actually like so, so vain. I've met gay men before that were like so vain, like they tweeze their eyebrows, they like, um, they put on some eyebrow product or like something. I'm like, damn, you, 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 you really hate yourself. You, no, I'm just okay, I have a question for you then. Okay. Um, we're here for questions. <laughs> <laughs> so moving off to college and becoming one with yourself and embracing was it easier to embrace your makeup journey in college or did you were you still just as into makeup in high school i guess is the question well i was always into uh just transformation in general one of my moms would just wear the most simplistic makeup ever would just be some light purple eyeshadow some eyeliner mascara lip liner, lipstick, and she's done for the day. And like, that's what I was, you know, really intrigued by how her eyes just look so pop, how it just popped. And then like, yeah. she looks gorgeous, but when she takes off at the end of the day, she's my mom, you know? And when it came to my Aunt Tina, on the other hand, you know, she was like 80 styles makeup, like cream, like <laughs> foundations, like liquid, like powder, powder, powder everywhere. And I, I thought love she, it. And I thought she was gorgeous. And she used to never like go out in public without makeup on. Until <laughs> until one day I saw her without makeup, I was like, oh, hello, I. I mean, but that was probably like, was that hard for you to do to do that? It or was, or well, it was sort of. I mean, my my other mother Tanya, she never approved of it really. Not of men wearing makeup, women wearing makeup. She's totally fine with because I think in her mind it's the natural feminine thing to do. I'm taking, yeah, I'm taking a guess, I don't know. But um, for for me, it wasn't. I thought, you know, men wear makeup in red carpets. Men wear makeup for, movie, for television and movies and like theater people wear yeah. makeup, heavy amount of makeup. Well, men have actually been wearing makeup for way longer than anyone knows. Like when, if anyone who was on, was broadcasted on TV had to wear makeup, I just think that it's been a stereotype for too long that only women can wear makeup. And I think that now, obviously, we've kind of broken through that um, stereotype. Because you see men everywhere now. Like, you go in the Sephora, Morphe, whatever. You're, you're about to see some men on, with, even with beards. And I'm like, heck yes. Y'all yes. do that. 
Yeah, like, and it's proven historically that men in ancient Egypt, men and women have been wearing makeup for a long time. And it was worn for all classes, really. It wasn't just for one particular class. Like, everyone wore it. Poor, rich, male, female, doesn't matter. Like, you, if you wore makeup, that's what you did. Heavy eyeliner was a thing. When I was a junior in high school, oh, I did the most disgusting amount of makeup. <laughs> I found like a cheap foundation that I found on Amazon. It was before I even knew makeup. And along with like a concealer that was like a knockoff of like the, of, like the Makeup Forever one that was like in the tube. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And then some eyeliner that I, you know, s you know, sneaky bought. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what um, I got. And then I used that eyeliner for my brows. I used it for my eyeliner. Like, but then, you know, men obviously, well, had a problem with it. And it got so bad that the principal, who was a female and really couldn't talk about her wearing makeup because she looked like freaking, I don't know, Birdman. And I, I'm, I'm sorry. The principal had a problem for her being a woman. And then, you know, Tanya, you know, she threw away all the makeup that, that I bought. Or, yeah. So it kind of hurts my heart that, you know, Tanya even. Well, you, know, does you have that. to think like for their time. It wasn't, and it's sad for their generation, you know? It really is sad for their generation. But, I don't know. We are living in a better, more equal world. I promise I would talk about this on your channel. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. So, I don't know how many of you are avid TikTok watchers. Oh, yeah. I am now known as the Michael Mars girl. Not Michael Myers. Michael Mars. <laughs> Michael because Mars. In a moment of fear, my country little heart, I have a crippling, irrational fear of Michael Myers. And it happened when I was a little kid. And, and he can't stop laughing because he fell out of the chair. And he saw the <laughs> when I was little, my dad, we I used to have like sleepovers around Halloween time, mostly because my birthday is in October. And we would watch the Halloween movies. And my dad had put on the Halloween movies for me and three of my friends. And disappeared. Next thing we know, a guy dressed as Michael Myers comes into our home and chases us around the house. Next, a couple years later, I think, one of the girls from that night, the, I mean the prior night where Michael Myers came into my home, the girl that was there went trick-or-treating with me and her and I were, you know, walking house to house. Next thing we know, Michael Myers is following us and we're, we're, we're looking back and we're like, is he following us? And so I started freaking out and call, calling my dad over and over and over and over and over, and he would not answer the phone. And so we thought we were gonna die. Like we, we genuinely thought we were gonna die because mostly we were coming upon like the end of the roads, like there was nowhere else to go. And my dad called, called back, and I was so mad to find out that he paid this man a hundred bucks to follow us. <laughs> and then number three reason why. It's because I went to a haunted house. This was like, well, I was way older, like 17. And I went to a haunted house with one of my friends and her two brothers. And we get out at the haunted house and there's a guy dressed as Michael Myers. Like, it looks like a statue. We went up to pay for our tickets and I could not stop staring at him. I was just like, is he gonna move? <laughs> he started walking towards me. So he was, he was real. So then I was freaked out. They told me that he was not gonna be in the haunted house, so I was fine waiting in that line going in the haunted house. My friends, my friend told me that he was gone, like he left. So I went to get in the truck, and in the front passenger seat, turns he turns back to me, and it is Michael Myers, <laughs> the guy. My friend's brothers had tipped him to get in the truck, and the child lock was on. They put the child lock on, so I couldn't get out of the truck, and he was just staring at me, and I was screaming, they're lucky I didn't break the windows. Anyway, so that's like my Michael Myers journey. Well, this past Christmas. <laughs> hey, Brian. Hi, cheese. 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 <laughs> okay. Did you bring your sweat hammer? Cheese are good. Oh, no. yeah. No. Uh, he didn't bring it. He's not good. Don't look. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, it's not Michael Myers. Uh, it's the doll. Okay. Let's go, let's go. Okay. No, no. It's a Michael Myers. It's a Michael Myers. No. It's a doll.
pray nothing ever traumatizes you to the point to where oh, oh, no. you have an irrational fear. You know what I'm jealous of? What? How quickly you've done your face. I'm just oh, now wow. getting into my eyes. Do you know why that is? Why? Because I hate waking up in the morning. Oh. <laughs> I have like mastered how fast it takes me to get my, my base on. Ugh. But my eyeshadow is what takes me forever, so you're gonna be fine. Like it oh. literally takes me for, like, oh, okay. this is just the beginning. Through my journey of makeup, I didn't believe all of the like regular beauty standards, like you need to like wear blush or you need to like wear um, like mascara or anything like that. I used to just be like, just be art person. Just be creative with your makeup. Don't be, <laughs> you don't have to like follow beauty standards. But then I understand, you know, there's technique in a lot of things you do, especially mm -hmm. with makeup. And there's like things that make things pop a little bit. For instance, blush. Like, I didn't know that blush actually gave something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it is it is what it is. <laughs> so like, when I put on makeup, I think of characters, in a sense. Yeah. Not necessarily character makeup, but more so just characters that, just envision in, that I just envision in my mind. Yeah. Like, for instance, I did a show that was called Wiley and the Hairy Man. <laughs> <laughs> I stage managed. She sta exactly, she stage managed. And, you know, I thought of like all of these like different colors of like what these woodland creatures are. Like it's like this bland forest, but I saw like different colors of like uh, pinks and blues and all of these colors. But then we just stayed to more green tones and brown tones. I was like, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm just playing. I'm not gonna get copyrighted. But I'm probably am gonna get copyright strikes. Maybe. Nah. Nah. They ain't gonna care about this 36 subscribe to YouTube channel. I never thought of internet internet fame as organic fame. I never really thought it like that. Mm -hmm. Because like if you look at it, we're all stars in our own way, in our own universe. But with that being said, um, you know, we just have like just a presence of our own that we think is glamorous in our own sense. Because to be an artist, you don't need a contract, really. You don't need a manager. You don't need like anything. And I've said this to Courtney before. All you need is a canvas, your paints, and your paint brushes, which is what we're doing here. <laughs> Wait, we are going to a Mexican restaurant after this. But we gotta wait for our friend though. And I yeah. wish I wish Hannah was here though too. I know. Yeah, Hannah's gonna have to come in, and I think that Hannah should be the person you do her makeup for your channel because she, I feel like she would enjoy that a lot. She really would. Yeah, honestly, because she never does anything crazy. She does makeup wise. She does like such glamorous makeup, honestly. Yeah, it's like soft nude or smoky eye, maybe a hint of a pink lip, possibly, mm -hmm. but not too much. Yeah, so I think you should just transform her. I mean, Courtney in general is photogenic as she is. <laughs> Truly, she is. <laughs> I'm being honest Thank here. You. Because you are, and like, you, again, you inspire me to be something more exotic. And you know what's another thing too? I don't understand TikTok. I you never, know? I never grasped the, the, how you say, the, the common sense of TikTok, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, Vine, but yeah, it's more extreme. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of like just another platform that everyone can be wild. <laughs> well, be wild, be, well, be how? Mostly get fame from, you know what I mean? Like easy fame. Like, you, it took, like I said, it, it took one video of me, and I don't post anything at all. <laughs> you know, like just because I haven't started yet, I'm planning on posting like singing videos and. Maybe some acting stuff on there, but just for my craft, you know. In your opinion, what's your opinion on Broadway and how um, the industry is in general? It, well, honestly, it just makes me so sad right now because those people have lost their whole lives. You know, we everyone has, everyone has, but like that industry is the scariest one to be in right now, I think, which any art, um, performance, entertainment industry job, I think, is in jeopardy right now because so many shows have closed on Broadway. Those people don't have those jobs anymore when mm -hmm. it ends, you know? 
Um, also, they're gonna be out of practice, out of shape. I don't think people realize how much work goes into maintaining your body as your, I mean, your body is everything. It's, when you're an actor or performer or whatever. Exactly, it's that image. And so to be out of work for going on a year now, you know, that's a long time to, to not be working on your craft. So I think unless you are just struck with fame from being on Broadway, I think it's going to be tough. Do you think there will be more um, artists of color in theater? I do. Um, with everything that that's happened this past summer um, with the Black Lives Matter movement. I think that Broadway and theater is one of the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if you think I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I think that theater is actually like the melting pot. You know, like we call the United States the melting pot, but we don't treat each other equal. And that is just, we've seen that everywhere. We've seen that in politics. We've seen that two days ago, <laughs> but and but more than that, like that's actually really serious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Broadway and theater, I think, is a safe space and should be a safe space. I'm not saying there's not some bad apples, you know, here and there, but theater is a safe space. And I think when the Black Lives Matter hit, Broadway and theater were the first um, companies and the first to reach out and the first to, I don't know, make a stand with our black community. Mm -hmm. And I think that they will be the ones to continue to do that. In a sense, I do agree with you that theater is a melting pot. However, I think, in my opinion, it's a divided melting pot. Um, meaning that, um, you know, we have so many black talent, so many Latin talent, so much Latin talent, Asian talent, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of race or ethnicity talent in New York and probably beyond, you know, in this great, you know, United States. However, though, do I think directors on Broadway, can they be biased towards that? I will agree. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree with you there. I don't think that it's so much the performers. I think it is, as you said, higher up. And I think that's because there aren't enough shows for our black performers. There should be more color in our shows. I agree. You know, I would love to be Gary the Snail. I would love to play Sandy. <laughs> you only want to play her because she's from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That was a boy. One time, Eddie did his makeup character as Jamal. Oh. A pig. A Peppa Pig. And I'm obsessed <laughs> with pigs. <laughs> People were actually shocked because I said I was going to come in as Peppa Pig. It was so good. Like, I told them I said I was going to come in as Peppa Pig Nobody for believed Halloween. That. No one believed me. And then suddenly I said, you know what? Time Pe to show there. Time to show these hoes. <laughs> <laughs> our plan for today was literally do our makeup like we were about to go to a drag show. Yes. <laughs> we were like Immediately, she says yes. We were going to be a little dramatic. But, yes. Yeah, that was our that's our plan, and that is just my wait plan. until we do go. So, oh my god, we do get ready to go to the drag show. I'm being very intricate with the sunliner, and probably being very not yeah, being very thick with it. So, good yes, we love a good. We're inspired by a Lady Gaga Judas thing. I'm gonna do mine a little bit different. It's gonna be more a geometrical in a sense. Will this ever be posted on Instagram? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but it. This yeah. is just for fun today. Yeah, it's just for fun. Then we're gonna go eat Santiago's. Exactly. We're gonna get some. Santiago's. Yeah, Santiago's. We're just gonna get like some Mexican food and like. Mm, and a margarita. Some random guy said that I look like Patrick Starr. What? First Thanks. of all, that's not even a good comparison mm -hmm. at all. At first, I didn't know who it was, but I was like, oh yeah, I watched his videos. <laughs> but like, and then I was like, you're telling me you're trying to insult me, saying that I look like this beautiful Filipino man in or out of makeup, you know? Like, you're telling me I look like him, but you're saying that as an insult. Very interesting, sir. I hope the god bees don't get extinct. Thank like, you. That's what keeps our world alive. Have, has anyone watched the movie? You know, I think the business within makeup, it's really, it really has grown.
Yeah. Like, I think it, like for any artist, whether you be an unknown artist or an artist that's been sort of known or even internet influencer, you're known. And, you know, brands like Morphe, they reach to influencers with really huge followings. Mm -hmm. And they get a success out of it. I think it's really a smart move, in my opinion. I do, too. I also think that it became that way from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that happened right in front of our eyes during our lifetime. Like, before us, it was that wasn't a thing. Like, one of the first YouTubers, I think, that ever did, like, a like a collaboration was an OG, which is your favorite, Jacqueline Hill. I watched her old videos from, like, eight, ten years ago. And I think she is... One, I think she's one of the most influent, like one of the most informational, at least. She is for me. She, I learned a lot from Jacqueline Hill, and it wasn't just because she's good at makeup. It was because, like, she was also just so real. Oh my god! You know, definitely. like she talked about her life and her personality just was like, really similar to mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was like, "Oh, we're friends." Yeah, and I mean, it's not like YouTubers nowadays. You know. Um, particularly with someone named uh, Jim Shirls, um, <laughs> where they don't really do makeup anymore, yeah. or they do, but, but it's, it's kind of like takes a back seat. Yeah, it's it's kind of like oh, fame I'm is more important. Yeah, my numbers yeah. and my viewers are more important. Nope. They kind of pull a Charlie D'Amelio, Daisy D'Amelio. My fans are not numbers. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even know what lashes. I mean, your look is very purple and natural. So I would say something that's dramatic and natural. I think of these. These kind yeah, of probably okay. work. Probably. I'm not sure. <laughs> so fucking stop, so fucking stop. <laughs> okay, my lash is a little wonky. A little wonky. Oh, I can't even tell though. One thing Eddie and I bonded over the first time Eddie came over to my house, we watched American Idol fails. <laughs> oh, particularly. Mary Rose. Mary Rose. Mary 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 Gilbo. Mary Gilbo. Mary Gilbo. Mary Gilbo. Mary Gilbo. She's like, uh, what's her first her actual name is Mary she, It's oh, Roach. Roach. Mary Rose, Roach. but I wanna go by uh Gilbo. Gilbo. It has more star quality. <laughs> And then she sings Carol King's uh, I Feel the Earth Move. She's like, I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky tumbling down. Why don't we do it the exact Because we know exactly how she sang it. it was, and, she was, and then when she came out and she said, oh yeah, I got many voices. And then he was like, yeah, what kind of voices? And then she sang, I don't know, it was like a rock song. Do you remember? Uh, I told you not to. Oh yeah, it was a, she was like, but it's a try. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so tired. And she, she, said, she was like, how do you think you did? She Simon Howe said, how do you think you did? And she said, on a or on a scale of one to ten. And she said, on a scale of one to okay. ten, how do you think I think I did? And he was like, yes. And she was like, not too shabby. shabby. She was like, eight. <laughs> It gets me too. Like walking out. I'll never see again. Oh, I'm just gonna do hair and makeup because that's what I'm good at. <laughs> Same. Us too. Same. That's what we're gonna do. If we, if we have you have you not seen this intricacy of this eyeliner? <laughs> if something like that happens to us, that's exactly what we're gonna. Oh yes. Say. We're gonna we're just gonna act it out. I'm gonna call Eddie and be like, I'm gonna do makeup and hair because that's what I'm good at. Good at. at. <laughs> and then he'll know. Hair and makeup, more fashion. <laughs> she cannot do. Have you watched Call Me By Your Name? Call Me By Your Name. Oh! Because the gay love story? That's my favorite movie in the world. I, I have the book, actually. Really? Yeah. It is, Eddie, that movie, I was not expecting it to, like, me and Hannah had a movie night, or, or yeah, we, we had a movie night, and we were gonna watch it, because we just kept hearing such good things about it, and, oh my god. I bet it was because like like it's honestly I think my like literally my favorite movie. Yeah, it's. I got my. I got kinda, my tweezers stuck on my. Yeah, it's kind of been not really ridiculed in the gay community, but it's kind of been kind of made a joke because it's like oh this this daddy and this twink, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know that. I think the people who say that need to watch it. They yeah, and they do. Some people because it's not it. like that. It's it's 
it's a beautiful love it story. It really is so beautiful. And it's based off a true story, actually. Yeah, and I, like, I wouldn't say that just to say it. Like, I'm, I judge movies harshly because I'm an actor <laughs> or actress. But, like, I really do. Like, I don't judge them harshly, but I, I'm not going to just say I like a movie when I don't. And that movie, I, the whole last five minutes, I could not stop crying. Yeah, it's like... Again, I consider like you feel their pain. Mm -hmm. And Timothy Chalamet, that's that's how he became one of my favorite mm -hmm. actors. Like he really is. I'm obsessed with Timothy Chalamet. Anyway, I just need to bring it up because it is such a good movie. I need to watch it. I really do. If I can find it anywhere. I know it's on Amazon. Well, I think I'm done. I think I fix my lips. So, I mean, if you need a closer mirror. Oh no, I was looking into the thing just so I could see like oh, without no. judging too harshly. Oh to the, <laughs> to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just setting my face at this moment and I'm gonna make it say matte. But I want this look to just like just come together. I mean, we had fun. We had a discussion. I think when people see this YouTube video, I don't know. I'm not wanting to get views, but po probably someone will see that TikTok of you, of that thing. You could just put in the... If you put Michael Mars, we maybe could get more views. We probably would. But it's like... This was so much fun, Courtney. I'm so glad that um, you came here today and that we just had fun with Me makeup. Too. We had fun just playing around with makeup and just... Getting crazy and creative, which is what an artist in general, be it, you know, entertainment, like for us it's theater, whether it be within cosmetics, it's about having fun and about you being the artist and you holding the paintbrush, not having someone control your arms as you paint. We're artists. And if people can't respect you as an artist, you know, it's, it's, how can I explain it? You are in charge of your own life as you were in charge of your own art. And only you should be holding the to your masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> know, was that good enough? That was, no, for real. Like, be the artist that you are. Like, we shouldn't have these rules within anything. Well, like, sure, there should be rules and technique and stuff like that. But creativity, though should never have any border or any form of of uh, censorship. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was sort of a fun video uh, to watch it over, you know. Um, again, I'm with the famous Michael Mars girl. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Bye.